newsletter and I'm the one that inundates your email inboxes on a monthly basis. So thank you for that, for accepting those. Um, I want to thank Leanne Mingo for being able to come and speak with us today as we carry on our uh, our theme on boreal conservation initiatives and wetland conservation initiatives um, specifically. Um, Leanne has kindly agreed to do this, this talk in July, post Canada Day weekend, which means it's a bit of a tough sell. Many of uh, It's amazing the number of out of office requests that come through, uh, but also the number of emails I've received that said, hey, make sure this is recorded so we can watch it later. So, um, you know, we might be a smaller in number today, but uh, know that fame and fortune await on YouTube. So, um, so just enough for me. Uh, Leanne is going to talk today on forest management and wetland stewardship initiative. And she is a conservation specialist with Ducks Unlimited Canada working in the Western Boreal region. And we're really thankful to have you here today in between some of your northern fields um, expeditions. So thanks, Leanne, and turn it over to you. Great. Thanks, John. Uh, thanks everyone for joining us in uh, July. I know it's a hard time to get everyone in the office. Um, as John mentioned, I'm a conservation program specialist with DC's National Boreal Program uh, based out of Edmonton. Uh, and my role circles around uh, knowledge extension and translation and a lot of work with our forest industry partners, uh, which is what I'm going to talk about today. I'm just going to take a sec to get my screen reorganized. There we go. Um, but before I begin, I would like to take a minute to respectfully acknowledge that I am located on Treaty 6 territory, a traditional gathering place for diverse Indigenous people, including the Cree, Blackfoot, uh, Métis, Nakota Sioux, Iroquois, Dene, Ojibwe, Saltu, Anishinaabe, Inuit, and many others. I respect their histories, languages, and cultures and continue, that continue to influence and enrich our vibrant community. So today I'm going to start a little bit high level, uh, probably not new information, but I'm going to provide a bit of a background to Ducks Unlimited Canada and our National Boreal Program to preface a little bit of the work we do with the forest industry, talk about forestry and wetlands, and then I'm going to speak to one project in particular, which is the Forest Management and Wetland Stewardship Initiative. Um, so as I'm sure most of you know, uh, our vision and mission uh, mission is to conserve, restore, and manage wetlands and associated habitat for North America's waterfowl. These habitats also benefit other wildlife and people. And with that, we have a couple different approaches to delivering our mission. Um, that is some of the direct habitat management programs, which is more of the on the ground restoration and reclamation work that happens more typically across the prairies. We do extension work to industries, which is what I'm going to speak to, um, as well as public policy. We are a research-based organization. Uh, we have a research branch, branch based out of our head office, uh, the Institute for Wetlands and Waterfowl Research. We also do a bunch of education work with school-aged youth, as well as with the practitioner level. And as a non-for-profit, fundraising is also a big part of our, our mission there. Um, so as John mentioned, I am positioned within our National Boreal Program. Uh, it's a very large re region with a fairly small group of staff working on it. Um, the National Boreal Program was initiated in the late 1990s with a growing recognition of the importance of the boreal and particularly the western boreal to uh, waterfowl populations. And this became a core program within DUC in the early 2000s. But because the boreal is primarily public lands or crown owned lands, we have to operate a little bit differently. Our traditional approaches of working directly with private landowners don't work the same way when you're operating on public lands. So we are a partnership driven program. We work primarily with industry, governments, indigenous communities and academia to work to enhance wetland conservation and stewardship. We focus on influencing government policies and industry practices to conserve wetlands, as well as work to promote sustainable land use practices and protected areas in certain areas. 
So where my role fits in this is really on that sustainable land use side, uh, working with industries and governments. And we work to promote sustainable land use practices around wetlands through a several different activities. Uh, first, we offer wetlands trainings. Uh, we do online training, classroom and field based trainings um, to really help practitioners or those land managers and people who actually work on the land base to understand what wetlands are. Uh, wetlands in the boreal look very different than they look in the prairie systems. They're often treed systems. Um, over 60% of Alberta's boreal wetlands are treed systems. Uh, we also work to promote uh, knowledge sharing and transfer through developing things like field guides. Uh, most recently, we uh, released the Alberta Wetland Classification System Field Guide, which is a really great resource. Uh, it's very user friendly and has a lot of pictures to help practitioners in Alberta identify wetlands across the province in accordance with the provincial classification system. We also work to provide input into policies and guidelines, directives and certification standards, as well as land use plans uh, to influence how wetlands are incorporated into these systems, as well as work with academia to support various research initiatives across the Western Boreal. So with that context, I wanted to switch a little bit into how that then applies to the forest industry and the work we do with them. Um, the forest industry is really a critical and leading sector that's needed to help ensure wetlands remain a healthy component of Canada's working boreal forest. And we understand that uh, stewardship of boreal wetlands really requires the participation of industry. And this is because wetlands can influence forest management in several different ways. And vice versa is also true. Forest management can influence wetlands. Wetlands influence the ecosystem goods and services. Uh, they can influence forest productivity and resiliency. Uh, they can influence operational costs as well as safety considerations of forest management and operations, as well as influence legal certification so and social license obligations. So in the next few slides, I'm going to just talk a bit about each of those bullets in a little bit more detail before I jump into specifically how we work with the forest industry and uh, some of our projects. Uh, so first, this is probably the most obvious one, the ecological goods and services wetlands provide. Um, wetlands provide incredible habitat for not just waterfowl and water birds, but also large mammals such as bears, moose and caribou, as well as amphibians and songbirds, among many others. Wetlands are also critically important for water storage and filtration, as well as uh, store and sequester incredible amounts of carbon, which is increasingly being recognized in certification as well as um, uh, regulatory requirements. Wetlands also can influence forest productivity and resiliency. Uh, wetlands have been shown to be water sources to adjacent upland forests and actually regenerating aspen can use wetlands as water sources in times of drought. Uh, research is also showing that upland forests, the trees may lay what are called root pipelines through riparian zones into wetlands in order to access water sources. Uh, wetlands also influence the uh, legal certification and social license obligations. And uh, because the project I'm going to speak to is primarily focused in Alberta, um, some of the things I've highlighted here are Alberta or federally focused, um, but various uh, species related obligations around the Species at Risk Act, the Migratory Bird Convention Act, uh, the Fisheries Act, among others that forest companies are required to um, follow. In Alberta, uh, forest management companies are also required to follow the timber harvest and operating ground rules, um, which recently have been updated to uh, really include wetlands at a much more detailed level than they have in the past. And this document really regulates what forestry companies do on the ground and how they operate. Uh, additionally, the Alberta Wetland Policy enforced under the Water Act, influences forest management and forest verification schemes. Uh, most forestry companies across Canada 
are certified to some sort of external third party uh, for certification, whether that's FSC, SFI, or CSA. Um, and these certification schemes have requirements uh, in order around uh, soils and water um, and include wetlands at quite a lo high level. Um, and lastly, wetlands obviously can influence uh, operational costs and safety. Wetlands are not always the easiest uh, things to work around. Um, I think these pictures speak for themselves here, but some of the other uh, challenges really focus around access um, and roads. Typically, forestry companies are going to avoid wetlands wherever possible, but being that wetlands dominate uh, Alberta's boreal, it's pretty hard when trying to access some of these remote areas to entirely avoid wetlands. And some of the challenges that they can brought, bring are sinking culverts due to the really soft soils. Uh, you can have road settling flooding, rutting, which can lead to erosion. Uh, so wetlands can provide uh, quite a few operational challenges. But as I mentioned, it can work the, uh, both ways. Uh, timber harvest also influences uh, wetlands. It can influence wetland abundance and distribution. It can influence wetland water quality, as well as the hydrology. And one of the main ways uh, forest management influences wetlands is around access management. As I had mentioned, um, it's pretty challenging to avoid wetlands entirely. So often, um, uh, in order to access some of their, their, their cut or harvest areas, uh, wetland crossings are needed. And this is one example of a road crossing that was built uh, during a dry period and it was built through a swamp. However, they weren't aware it was a swamp at the time. Um, and they can be one of the most challenging wetlands to identify. Uh, but the road caused uh, damming of the water, so you have it pooling all on the side. Um, which generally uh, can cause some other issues, including rutting and compaction of soils, uh, which can disrupt vegetation growth, wildlife habitat, and water movement. Uh, these disturbed soils, especially in peatlands, are then more susceptible to erosion. Um, additionally, this disturbance can cause carbon sequestration and storage impacts, as well as block the natural flow of water. And what all this is really saying is that in order to have uh, sustainable wetland habitats, it's really important to work collaboratively at an ecosystem level. Um, and that sustainable forest management and sustainable wetlands are highly intertwined. Which leads us to why DUC works with the forest industry. We've been working with the forest industry since the beginning of uh, pretty well the start of the boreal program and have worked on several different projects together. We've worked together on various knowledge exchange activities, um, developing guidebooks such as the ones displayed here, um, collaborative projects to understand how to build better road crossings through wetlands, um, as well as um, projects around uh, carbon storage mapping. And the one I'm going to speak a little bit more to today being the Forest Management and Wetland Stewardship Initiative. Um, and this project has been short, shortened to uh, be referenced as the FIMWYSI, terrible acronym, uh, but I will refer to it as that moving forward as it's a terribly long name. Uh, so the FIMWYSI is a partnership uh, between Dex Limited Canada, Alberta Pacific Forest Industries, CANFOR, the Forest Products Association of Canada, Miller Western, Tolco Industries, West Fraser, and Weyerhaeuser. And this collaborative project began through some discussions uh, between Dex and Limited and some of these forestry companies in early 2016, in or as forestry companies were looking for a way to better utilize their financial resources as well as to collaborate with other companies that were looking to answer similar questions around wetland stewardship and forest management. And in the fall of 2016, these companies came together and began to formalize this collaboration. And it launched in 2017 for a three-year initiative. And the initiative focused 
on four broad themes. The goals were to strengthen forest management planning and operations, work to better communicate wetland best management practices, ensure companies were able to meet their forest certification requirements, whether those were uh, the FSC certification requirements or SFI, as well as work to better understand uh, climate change mitigation and adapt adaptation techniques. And with that, there were three objectives outlined under the initiative, which were to advance sustainable forest management, establish guiding principles and best management practices to conserve wetlands and waterfowl in forest management planning and operations, and complement provincial forest management planning requirements. So the Forest Management and Wetland Stewardship Initiative, or the FIMWSI, uh, agreed on three projects that were of mutual interest. And these projects were selected uh, on a consensus basis by all the product or companies involved. So over the first three years, which was from 2017 to 2019, three projects were selected. The first uh, was looked at forestry and waterfowl, assessing and mitigating risk. The second looked at guiding principles for wetland stewardship and forest management. And the third project looked at a guide to wetland best management practices for forest management. And I'll speak to each of these projects in the next couple of slides. So the first project we looked at was that forestry and waterfowl assessing and mitigating risk. And this was based on the need to um, minimize their risk of incidental take and show their due diligence. Under the Migratory Bird Convention Act, incidental take, which is the inadvertent harming of nests, eggs, or young, um, is prohibited. Um, however, you cannot get a permit for incidental take. You have to show your due diligence that you're doing what you can to minimize your risk of influencing uh, duck net or waterfowl nest eggs or young or migratory birds, sorry. So, this uh, project resulted in a technical report as well as a much more friendly uh, practitioner guide that took into account uh, nesting phenology of waterfowl, abundance distribution, and next, nest proximity to open water to develop a tool to help wet, or forest practitioners understand their risk of incidental take based on the season or time of year uh, based on the level of disturbance the activity would be having and the activity that they were doing. And the document describes various mitigation approaches based on those things to help them understand uh, what level of risk they may be in for in incidental take. To support this project, a GIS layer was also developed to help them in their planning processes to understand where high risk areas uh, for the incidental take of waterfowl uh, may be. And this project was particularly unique in that it did focus on waterfowl. There are various other models out there that the forestry companies utilize to minimize their risk for things like songbirds, but waterfowl was truly one of the gaps. Uh, so the GIS layer combined with this guide worked to fill that gap and try to minimize their risk uh, to waterfowl, particularly during the breeding season. The second project worked to address one of those objectives for the FIMWSI around guiding principles for wetland stewardship and forest management. And again, this project resulted in a technical report as well as a much more friendly uh, practitioner guide. And the goal of this project was to develop conservation objectives uh, that align with sustainable forest management frameworks. So the technical report synthesizes information on wetlands and forest management and provides foundational guiding principles for wetland stewardship. The report developed four key guiding principles, and these were to, to maintain wetland quantity, maintain wetland quality, maintain hydrological processes, and maintain hydrologic connectivity. And with these main guiding principles, seven stewardship objectives 
were outlined. And these are more detailed uh, objectives that filter under each guiding principles, such as avoid or minimize adverse effects. This project really focuses on strategic level principles for forest management and wetland stewardship and was built to support the third project, which was a guide to wetland best management practices for forest management planning and operations. And it takes those high level guiding principles and stewardship objectives and puts them into on the ground applicable practices for forest management. This project uh, didn't have a technical report and is just a uh, user friendly practitioner guide. And it describes and identifies planning and operating practices for consideration to promote wetland stewardship in the context of forest management. The practices identified focus on uh, reducing potential negative effects of activities on wetlands around the hydrology as well as ecology. And it collates both practices that are currently used by several forestry companies, as well as identifies potential gaps or areas of improvement. So those three projects were what we did for uh, FIMWYSI 1.0, as we're calling it now. Um, and it was uh, incredibly successful in terms of working together with several different forest management companies uh, in Alberta, building trusted relationships and working that with uh, all these different groups um, at a closer level than we had in the past in a really collaborative fashion. And with its success, uh, DUC was the recipient of the 2020 Award of Excellence from the Forest Products Association in recognition of the Forest Management and Wetland Stewardship Initiative. However, with having developed these projects or these products, well, there was still a gap in terms of the implementation and we felt there was still more work we could do together. So building off the success of FIMWYSI 1.0, the partners agreed to extend the collaboration for another three years. Um, so this collaboration uh, goes from 2020 to 2023. So it's the projects we're currently working on. Um, and we're terming this FIMWYSI 2.0. <clears throat> and we used a similar uh, process as we did for the first round of the FIMWYSI projects was through a consensus basis, the partners voted upon the projects that were of highest interest to them. And three projects that uh, the collaboration decided to focus on were wetland stewardship in Alberta's operating ground rules, boreal wetland soil carbon storage mapping, as well as training and relationship building. So I'll describe what each of those are in the context of, of this project here. So the first project we looked at as part of FIMWYSI 2.0 was looking at uh, the Alberta Timber Harvest and Operating Ground Rules, or the OGRs. And I had mentioned these uh, under in some of the background information, and these are the, the regulations that really describe what forest management companies are required to do on the ground. And the goal of this project was to review the operating ground rules for each of the different forest management companies we were working with and identify what is working well, as well as opportunities to enhance the practices in the OGRs in relation to wetlands and waterfowl stewardship. So we reviewed uh, seven OGRs from the member companies, as well as conducted interviews or discussions with groups of their staff to really understand uh, not only what is in the operating ground rules on paper, but how this is implemented on the ground and what potential challenges there are or opportunities there are for improvement from, from the company staff perspective. As a result of that, uh, the partnership brought forward uh, several recommendations or DUC brought forward several recommendations and the partnership reviewed discussed and agreed upon a subset of those to bring forward to the government of Alberta. And conveniently, as we were initiating this project, uh, the government of Alberta began a review of, of this same piece of regulation with the intent of, of updating and revising it. 
So we brought forward our recommendations uh, in excellent timing to filter into that review process. And the GOA was incredibly receptive of, of this group coming together and bringing forward them, uh, these recommendations. And we had several uh, subsequent discussions with them to clarify kind of what we meant, what the implications of that would be, and how that um, might be written into an updated version of the timber harvest and operating ground rules. And uh, the OGRs were actually just released in May of 2022. And we found most of the comments we had submitted were included in this updated version. And what it really did was better aligned the Alberta wetland policy or the intent of the Alberta wetland policy with the operating ground rules. For the most part, this didn't change what forest management companies were doing on the ground. Uh, most of them were doing above and beyond what were required in the ground rules around wetland stewardship, but really showcased in the regulations that they were doing all these excellent things uh, to minimize their impacts uh, around uh, wetlands and waterfowl habitat. So this project has officially wrapped up and we were really happy to see the outcomes of the OGRs and a lot of our work and our, our recommendations included in this. The second project we're working on, which is currently underway, focuses on understanding wetland soil carbon as well and mapping that. Uh, so the project has a twofold objective. First, it's looking to estimate below ground carbon storage of boreal wetlands and apply this to DUC's enhanced wetland classification system. If you watched the PHJV webinar from, I believe it was last month, our remote sensing team talked a little bit about the enhanced wetland classification system. It is the wetland classification system we've used to map uh, the Boreal Plains ecozone, um, as well as various areas in the north. And the goal is to create a spatial product that aligns uh, carbon storage or levels with uh, the different wetland classes. And the outcome would be to produce a spatial product for each company's FMA that estimates uh, wetland soil carbon storage. The second part of this project is focusing on more of a literature view to understand how forest management may influence wetland and upland soil carbon storage and sequestration. And with that information, develop some high level recommendations for how forest management or FIMWISI members may be able to minimize their potential negative effects or maximize potential positive effects to wetland and upland carbon or soil carbon storage and sequestration. So this summer, we're heading out to conduct some additional data sampling of uh, soil and get some more soil carbon estimates in one of our major gap areas to better feed into the model and improve our model of below ground carbon storage in wetlands. And on that second objective, we have drafted a literature review and um, also conducted interviews with um, academic experts to ensure we um, had captured all the pertinent or important literature around uh, soil carbon surge and sequestration in both wetlands and uplands and have that filter into the literature review and the recommendations that come out of that report. Uh, so this project is set to complete in uh, March of 2023, so it is still underway. And lastly, uh, the third project we're looking at or we're working on is the training and relationship building project. Um, this project probably could have used a better name, but it is exactly that. Uh, we're looking to build relationships with not just the seven members that sit at the table of our forest management and wetland stewardship initiative meetings, but really engage with the staff that work on the ground and engage DUC staff beyond the couple of us that work on the projects to, to better understand what this looks like on the ground and how forest management and wetland stewardship um, is really important. So as part of this, uh, there are several different activities we've planned. Uh, first, 
we hosted a virtual GIS and remote sensing knowledge exchange workshop um, in February of this year, uh, involving several uh, members from each of the forestry company staff, as well as DUC. And this workshop focused on sharing the products that DUC has for mapping wetlands, as well as understanding and learning from um, the forestry companies on the projects or products that they use to interpret where wetlands are on the land base and what gaps they find um, and opportunities there are to improve these projects or products uh, to understand potential uh, future collaboration opportunities. And this workshop resulted in some really great discussions and improved understandings on both sides of the project products that are available, uh, as well as sparked some ideas of future projects. The next activity um, that we've uh, just started this summer focused on, uh, it was twofold. Um, first, it was delivering boreal wetland identification and classification training as well as conducting in-person field tours led by forestry companies. So what this has worked out to be is three, two to three or four day tours uh, on each of the different forest companies FMA uh, or forest management area across Alberta to deliver training with their staff and trying to incorporate and include as many staff as possible from their planners and their certification people to their on the ground operators and layout crews. As well as to provide a learning opportunity for DUC staff to go out in the field and really see what forestry looks like on the ground. Uh, so this past uh, month, we went out to uh, work with Warehouser Grand Prairie, Warehouser Pemina, uh, Canfor, um, as well as Alpac or Alberta Pacific, and, and met with several of their staff to deliver these trainings and, and understand what forestry looks like. So we had a really good opportunity to see um, examples of salvage harvests and what a corduroy road looks like or mounding techniques. And it provided a really great opportunity to get everyone together in the field and have some great discussions. And then the last couple activities uh, of this project are developing additional trainings, uh, wetland flow characteristics and wetland crossings training. Um, and the goal of this is to uh, develop training materials on how to understand how wetlands move water and how this may influence the type of wetland road. As I spoke to earlier, um, roads are one of the main ways for management companies interact or influence wetlands. So understanding how wetlands move water is really important to building appropriate crossings. Similarly, um, we're looking at how different companies uh, work and implement practices and training around migratory birds and specifically waterfowl. And the goal of this is really starting to work to implement the products of FIMWSI 1.0 into operations and into the planning and practices of the company's current operations. And so that is our whirlwind tour of uh, the forest management and wetland stewardship initiative. Um, so I'll open it up to questions if anyone wants to or has questions or wants more information about this project. Um, I will also just mention that all the guidebooks and technical reports I spoke to as part of this initiative are available for download online on boreal.ducks.ca under our resources tab. Thank you, Leanne. I think we'll do one of those virtual round of applause. And thank you for this presentation and all the good information you've provided this morning. Um, yeah, questions, I think, Lee? You can either speak it out or type it or whatever you prefer, but um, more than happy to. Yeah, and Leanne, if you want to put put on your video now, then we can see you as you respond. Yeah, that would be great. I was trying to uh, clap my hands and hit the real button. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot, well, you can still ask a question if you like. <laughs> Uh, 
looks like you covered so much land that the people are processing still. So, um, <laughs> Matt, Matt, go ahead. Hey, Leanne, thanks. Thanks for a nice overview of everything there. That was that was nice. Um, just curious, your time spent in the field lately with some of these uh, forestry companies. What are some of the things that they're interested in in terms of like research and evaluation to support some of those BMPs? Uh, like what 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 are they talking about when you're we're talking with them? Is it biodiversity? Is it all carbon? Like what? what yeah. What are their interests? Yeah. Um, and you know what? Depending on where we were changed what their interests were. And I see Kristen, you're online. Feel free to jump in. You attended a couple of them as well. Um, one of the things that did pop up was really understanding how um, the models for understanding a songbird risk differ from where our incidental take model um, puts waterfowl risk. I think most of it's around the proximity to open water would be my guess, but that was definitely one of their interests. Um, there was also some interest in really understanding their impact on road crossings. Um, they typically do short term or what are called temporary roads less than three years, um, but don't have a good understanding of what those impacts actually are and whether their approaches to mitigate those risks are effective. Um, there's certainly interests on the biodiversity and carbon front because those are pieces of their forest certification schemes as well. But I suspect there will be certainly future conversations around that, but we didn't get into too much of the weeds on those ones yet. Great, thanks for that question, Matt. Is there anyone else? All right, well, if not, uh, I'm sure you all can track Leanne down through contact information or, or through myself. Um, but um, thank you again, Leanne, for taking the time out of your summer schedule and in between field season to, to speak to this group. And thank you to those of us that are able to attend today as well. So um, final claps and thank you. And you can see this, it is recorded, so we'll see it posted probably by this afternoon, right, Ian? Um, up on the PHJB website. So thank uh, you very much. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you for attending, everybody. Have a nice day.